Hello everyone, uh, my name is Isaac and uh, I'm a PhD student at University of Laval and today I will share with you some uh, results of my ongoing PhD project, especially focus on the pressure, temperature, time, deformation, fluid evolution of the Pontiac metasedimentary sediment province and its implications for orogenic gold mineralization. So it's well known that most orogenic gold deposits were formed at the late stages of the superior crater stabilization, around 2.7, 2.6 billion years, and they are close in time with the metamorphic evolution of the metasedimentary sub-province. So perhaps the link between them indicate that the metasedimentary uh, sub-province could be a potential source for the gold endowment. And as Diogo mentioned, Pontiac is one of the best examples we have because some previous work have demonstrated uh, through ultra low detection limit methods uh, on metal wax and metapelitic samples across different metamorphic isograts here in two different locations as you can see here that we have this progressive depletion in gold and associated metals from the biotite to the silmanite zone from north to south and through mass balance calculations, they have estimated that the Pontiac produced over 215,000 tons of gold, which kind of uh, represents 3% of the estimated resource uh, of the ABT gold camp. So, you start from the premise that the Pontiac is a potential source, we kind of define five main uh, research objectives. So first, we're going to try to define the PTT deformation, fluid evolution of the Pontiac. We're going to try to better understand the New Archean tectonics and the impact of regional fluid generation and circulation on the gold endowment. And we also have these specific objectives here so that is trying to establish the time of metamorphic fluid release and its correlation with the gold mineralization we see in the, in the ABTB. We're going to try to quantify the volume of metamorph fluid release during prograde degradation reactions during the volatilization process. And we're going to try to determine the key metamorphic reactions responsible for the fluid production. So in the end, we're gonna, if you're able to accomplish these objectives, I'm going to try to find this gold fluid window. So this was the, the approach of our project. So first, we uh, did new mapping of metamorphic isograts and zones, uh, petrological and microstructure analysis, whole rock and mineral chemistry analysis, phase equilibrium modeling of representative samples, metapelitic and metawax samples, and finally, um, you use UPB monazite and zircon and lutetian hafnium garnet dating of metamorphic uh, reactions and fluid release. Just uh, talk a little bit about the geological context, the geological background of the Pontiac. We have these basement rocks represented by a TTG Gnai suite here in the south part, in the east part of the area. There is an important plutonism in the area, represented by a Sanuktoid suite here in red. Uh, there is also S-type granites here in the central part of the Pontiac. And the mat sediments are mainly thick turbidatic sequence with concordant comatitic basaltic flows that occurs in the north part here. Uh, and we, we know that the maximum depositional age is around 2682 million years, and we have this prograde metamorphic age around 2657 million years. We also know that the meta sediments display a Barovian-like uh, field gradient from, from the biotites to the silimanite zone, even to uh, partial melting. And we decided to use this area here because it's exposed a completely Barovian like sequence and in small geographical area as well. So our first step was remap the metamorphic isograts trying to identify the index metamorphic minerals along uh, pelitic layers. So from north to south we could observe an increase of grade passing through the garnet zone the starolite zone and the silimanite zone. Unfortunately, we didn't find any kyanite bearing samples there, but from previous works, we know that having reported the presence of kyanite, so we used the outcrops locations to trace the isograde here. There is two main deformation phases in the area. 
So D1 was responsible to develop a sub-vertical to vertical northeast strand cleavage that's parallel to sub-parallel to the bedding planes, as you can see in the stereograms. D2 was responsible for overprinting D1 related structures, producing a vertical east uh, west strand crenellation cleavage. So here we have the relationships we observe as well, the F1 and F2 folds in the quartz and veins here. And we can see the relationship of F1 and F2, and also the relationship between the S1 and S2 foliation thin sections. Now that we have a, a better knowledge of the structural geology, we kind of try to establish uh, the link of the fabric development and the porphyroblast growth. So we are able to define that the peak metamorphic assemblies were developed during and after D2 deformation phase. As you observe here, uh, across the metamorphic zones, we start to see the S1 uh, in the biotite and the, the garnet zone, but when it goes to the starolite and the silimanite zone, the D2, it's the main phase we observe from north to south. The other thing that's interesting here, we have some chromium garnet maps. And we use chromium because chromium is immobile during prograde metamorphic uh, conditions. So we could see that across the metamorphic zones, um, garnet overprinting is overprinting the main fabric, the main fabric associated with the S2 in the garnet zone, the starolite, and the silimanite zone. This would be important when you talk about the, when you talk about dating garnet. We also investigate how the mineral assemblies uh, vary as a function of whole rock compositions across the, uh, the metamorphic zones. We didn't see any distribution here and indicate a, a different difference between the, the metamorphic zones. And then we select some representative samples for phase equilibrium modeling. We select one sample for the silimanite zone, two samples for the starolite zone, and two samples for the, the garnet zone. So here's the, the steps we took to retrieve the peak PT conditions from the metamorphic rocks. So we first reuse the whole rock geochemistry data, and then we choose the compositional system we want to model these rocks, and then we are able to calculate the isochemical PT phase diagrams. We also describe the texture relationship between the minerals and use the micro XRF maps to calculate model proportions of the main phase we observe in thin sections. And finally, we also obtain mineral compositions through probe analysis. So now, this is an isochemical PT phase diagram that we calculated here. And the first thing to do is to check if we can uh, reproduce the equilibrium mineral assemblage we observed in the thin section. So if, if yes, we can then try to calculate the modal proportions of the main phase, and then we calculate the mineral compositions of the main phase. If I get a good intersection of the model proportions and the mineral compositions, we can then try to estimate the peak PT conditions of the rock. So for that case here, in the starlight zone, we have these 5.9 kilobars and 600 Celsius. Other thing that's important, we use the grosular contents uh, and garnet here because it's, uh, calcium has very slow diffusion rates during prograde metamorphism. So we're able to trace a prograde vector from the core to the ring of garnet. And this was uh, just one example. This was the approach we used for all the, the metamorphic zones. And we end up with the PTD paths here. Oh, sorry. So we kind of uh, determined three types of TT, PTT paths when you integrate all the data we, we have. We have this load hinting path for the garnet zone with pressure of 8 kilobars and 585 uh, Celsius. We have this isobaric heating path for the starlight zone rocks around 6 kilobars and 610 Celsius. And we have this uh, decompression heating path we're able to determine for the silimanite zone rocks around 6 kilobars and 700 Celsius. And the, the important thing here is that we're able to determine two thermal, two different thermal gradients, one low thermal gradient for the, the garnet zone rocks and a moderate to high thermal gradients for the starlight and the silimanite zone rocks. 
So here we have this uh, preliminary devolatilization model, modeling. And here we have this isochemical PT phase diagram with a pressure here and then temperature. And we decide to calculate the A2O in solids. The idea was to see how much water has been released uh, during prograde uh, metamorphic reactions. And we used uh, this preliminary approach with um, a WAC and a P light at a fixed pressure at six kilobars. And the thing we could see here is a gradual decretion of modal proportions of bio, uh, muscovite and chloride for both, the, both samples. And we can see that the main fluid pulse here, when we have this major drop of muscovite and chloride, um, uh, breaking down, it's around 515 to 600 Celsius near to the sterolite isograde. What's important here is that at the same time you have this major, the main pulse fluid here, we are having a synchronous growth of garnet and the sterolite, which would be important when dating garnet, we dating the time uh, that fluid had, has been released. And the next steps for us when dealing with this devolatilization modeling is to incorporate sulfur in the thermodynamic database, because here we just, uh, we're considering just water. And so we can then complete the devolatilization reactions you observe in the thin sections, including pyrite and pyrotite. So now we, we have obtained lutetium half garnet age around 26, 57 million years which is in good agreement with the previously published A's around 26, 57 million years. And here we have some lutetian uh, maps where we can observe here some oscillatory zoning and well-preserved growth zoning. So meaning that limited internal diffusion hasn't disturbed the system. So when you go back to this one here, we date in the prograde uh, time uh, we constrain the prograde time, the time of prograde metamorphism, and the time of fluid release here. As a second control of the, the prograde metamorphism, we also date monazite and zircon. Uh, we, UPB, we use UPB monazite and zircon uh, for the silmanite melt zone rocks. That's, um, we got this age of 26, 16, 7 million years, with a difference of 10 million years when you compare with the garnet ages. And we got to these ages here with zircon of 26, 47 million years. So now that we try to integrate everything, we, we have this subsolids monazite and garnet, dated around 26, 67 million years and 26, 50, uh, 67, 57 million years that constrain the time of prograde metamorphism and the time that fluid was released through the devolatilization reactions. So we also have this supersolid zircon overgrowth from the silimanite melt zone that constrain the, the time of cooling at 26, 47 million years. So now that we want to try to link the metamorph fluid generation uh, with the orogenic gold mineralization, we can try to separate some time slices, I would say, uh, where we have this prograde metamorphism at 26, 67 million years, 26, to 7 million years. We have the subsolids monazite crystallization, a period of garnet growth and the main fluid generation. And while also we have this uh, 2640, 2645, we have this period of regional cooling. Uh, and we have this supersolid zircon overgrowth. And was a report in the Malartic Voldor camp that the main mineralization event was around 2643. And Around 26, um, 26 uh, zero, uh, zero 02 and 2612, we have this, uh, could, we could say, a period of gold remobilization has been reported in Herzog and co authors in uh, 2022. And one of the, the best models we have to uh, try to explain the, gener the fluid generation is a deep laid model from Stu, 1988. Uh, old model, but it still works. And where we have these fluids was produced at depth from rocks that are undergoing the prograde devolatilization that can form this uh, orogenic gold deposit at shallow levels in the crust along a retrograde path that represented the original cooling around 2640. 
doing to erosion drift uplift. This has been described uh, in other places as well, uh, in New Zealand, Alaska, Australia, where we have this time gap between prograde metamorphism and the time of gold mineralization that's around 20 million years, 30 million years in different places. So thank you very much for your attention.